All right, I think we're live. We're up. We're good now. I'm gonna give it a couple seconds for people to join. You can keep scrolling. Maybe refresh the page. Okay, got a couple people joining, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off. Good morning, guys. Um, my name is Mac. I work here in HHP. Um, today, we are super excited to have you guys join us for um, What in the Health and Human Performance live series, both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, today, we are talking about our public health degree, and I have three super cool um, ladies joining us. We have Miss Kelly Russell, who is our program coordinator. We have Miss Kelsey Webster, who is our academic advisor, and and then we have Lindsay, who is a current public health student who is actually going to be leaving us soon, unfortunately, but we are so excited for her. Um, so a little bit about this is we have a couple questions for each kind of uh, each person. And you guys are more than welcome to ask questions during the live and we can address them uh, at the end. So um, we have a couple general questions for the group. Um, maybe Kelly, this might be a good one for you to start with. Um, just kind of tell us a little bit about the degree and what students would be studying. Sure, so we have our BS Public Health degree. Um, we are an accredited program where we are working with individuals who really want to help people. Um, I don't think that there's a single student that even though they have a variety of different paths and different tracks that they take, they all want to help people in some capacity. And um, normally in classes, I start off our semester with a, I say purple, you say? Gold. Oh, oh well, no. So that's pretty good. Uh, Y'all did well there. But if I said public health, what do you say? Wash your hands. <laughs> Wash your hands. I'm surprised nobody yelled out COVID. Yeah, seriously, at this point in time. The thing is, normally if I start off with that one little icebreaker, we can typically go around the room and never duplicate what public health really represents. And that just kind of really shows how broad public health is. We have people working in nonprofits, governmental settings, school settings, communities, lots of different ways that they can um, make their impact in the public health realm. So we've got three different tracks in our, our degree. We have a community health concentration, which is our most popular. We have the most amount of students, but we also have a pre-health professions and a worksite health professions concentration. Um, so within these three different tracks, it's really what do you want to do in your next step? How do you want to make your difference in public health? Um, so our degree is 120 hours. We do have some prescribed courses that you need to take, and those classes could vary from uh, epidemiology to uh, intro course. We also see um, an equity course that is very much needed, women's health. And then if we're looking at one of the particular concentrations being pre-health professions, we do see sciences. So those individuals are typically the ones that are wanting to go on to some type of a uh, post-professional school, mm -hmm. medical school, PA, OT, dental, things like that. And they need a degree. So if they need a degree, public health can really provide a firm foundation uh, for their under undergraduate degree, and then they can build in those requirements as necessary. Nice. Um, and while we're on the topic of public health, I forgot to address this at the beginning, but um, ECU is still requiring masks inside. However, pretty much everyone in this room is fully vaccinated. Um, so for the purpose of this video, we are gonna take our mask off just for audio and everything. Um, and then once we leave this room, we will be Put them right back on. Um, but my next question would kind of um, be about what kind of backgrounds do professors have in this unit? Because why would they want to learn from you? Like, what makes you guys uh, reputable and um, just super knowledgeable in your field? That's another great question. And with that question of purple <laughs> and gold and public health and whatever we get. Uh, we actually have polled our students before, and if you got one question to be able to share about what your faculty, um, how you would describe them, these are some of the descriptors that they provided from compassionate, great, genuine, nice, smart, knowledgeable, 
Uh, and I think that is a big one because we do need people that can share the experiences. One of the best ways that we see individuals learn is through stories. So for example, my background, I did work in nine, for nine years um, in a local health department setting, and I'm able to share a lot of those stories. So we do have a, a ton of practitioners. We also have a very um, good amount of people that are researching. So they are doing a lot of innovative things within the public health sector, and they can even bring students in. So we have people studying tobacco. Right now, vape is huge, and electronic cigarettes. Um, we have individuals that are studying alcohol and all of the different things that do impact health behavior. Nice. Um, Lindsay and Kelly, this may be good ones for you guys. Um, so Lindsay is finishing up her degree currently. She's in her internship. Um, but if I am a student who wants to maybe major in public health, but I'm not sure what kind of jobs I want or what I want to do, what does my job forecast look like and what kind of a jobs am I going to be applying to? Um, I would say what I learned the most like through all my classes is that one of the big things that you can do in public health is health education, but when everybody says health education, you automatically think a school teacher, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily what a health educator can do. Um, I would say you can be a health educator at a hospital, a health department, a community health center, um, some doctor's offices and things like that. There's just a many, many environments that you can actually get a job working with the community, not necessarily being their provider, but helping them understand their um, health scenario that they're facing right now, or what they could be looking out for in the future to prevent you know, bad health outcomes. So, cool. Yeah, and actually, just this <laughs> week I was reading something from ASPPH, which is our Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health, about how many more individuals are um, out there seeking positions in public health. And I think some of this is probably due to the pandemic, it has brought uh, public health into light of how necessary public health is. Um, with that, there are a ton of positions, and a lot of times we have questions, especially from moms and dads, of what do I look for? Because you can't really just go online and search uh, you know, a public health position. A lot of times it is a little bit more specific to that position. Uh, so here's some titles, whether it's from grant writer, health education director, a program specialist, an environmental advocate, maternal and child health specialist. Um, maternal health is especially big in public health, but when we think of public health, it's the three, three E's, everybody, everywhere, every day. Um, so if we are talking about everybody, everybody, everywhere, and that doesn't mean that we're limited just to the United States or even here in North Carolina, though we do have a, have a lot of folks that do stay in the area. Um, moving a, across the nation, even across the globe, uh, we have a wonderful global health course and even a study abroad experience to help students understand how they can make that impact um, in whatever capacity they see best for them. Nice. Cool. Um, what piece of advice do you guys have for incoming students? I think we could open this up to everybody. Advice is always a good thing, you know, to have, especially coming in as a freshman. And well, I would say to take advantage of the wonderful public health faculty that we have. You know, get to know your instructors. Um, don't be afraid to explore, you know, to find out what you're truly interested in because you might end up working on a really cool research project with them. And, um, yeah, that's, that's important. I would say maybe come in with an open mind. Um, you, like we said before, you can do so many different things with a public health degree. So just come in and look to, like she said, explore anything you can any subject you know you might love this kind of class like an epidemiology class but you might also love your program um, planning or evaluation kind of class so I would say just come in with an open mind and be willing to learn um, anything that's thrown at you. Can I get two? Yeah go for it. <laughs> Advice is always a good thing. <laughs> so one we learn probably sometimes even more from our mistakes and mistakes happen so you just got to put yourself out there and try. Um, and, and learn from everything, all the way from your classes, your group projects, immerse yourself into every opportunity that you can. Um, Lindsay is doing her internship, and it's a big change from the classroom. Our community health and work site health, um, these do require a 12 semester, in, a semester hour internship at the completion of the degree. Um, so, you know, learning from it, and it's sometimes those lessons of, 
oh, I have to get up at 6 a.m. <laughs> but that, I think, is one way that students really do understand what it is truly like to be a public health professional. Um, second bit of advice is probably communicating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially this past year, usually you can look around a classroom if you're teaching and if you see someone, you know, kind of that look. We know we need to clarify, mm -hmm. um, but in an online course, certainly communicating and in an in-person class. If you've got a question, most likely somebody else has that exact same question. Um, we are here to help if we don't know how to help, though, um, or we don't pick up on some of those cues of those you know, looks when mm -hmm. we're not getting it. Um, sometimes we're not as able to help the student, which is our main goal. I definitely think that communication thing is very important because I have not had a professor yet that I emailed them and they said, well, you need to figure it out on your own. They explain it in very detail. Here's what you can do to learn more or here, here is what we know about it. If this doesn't make sense, let us know. We'll find another way to help you out. So yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Good to hear. I love that there is a uh, pattern of always hearing students like saying, Oh, I love the community, love my professors, they're always willing to help, so that's always encouraging to hear. And I think we're all looking forward to fall, being oh, back in person. Absolutely. Yeah. Our doors are open <laughs> in Belk, um, and right. a lot of times we do. We have students, you know, in between classes, wandering around, just mm -hmm. stop by and say hello, because one, all of your professors are here to help, but two, they have those opportunities that can really make you stand out, whether it is research, or they may have their finger on the pulse of different job opportunities. Uh, and the more you can connect with them, the better they can help you in your next step. Okay, so this next question is for Kelsey. Um, she's our academic advisor, just to refresh everybody's memory. Um, based on previous advising of students, and she does a ton of advising for students, um, what were some of the classes students were most interested in if they were in this route? Um, our Health 2000 class, which is the Principles of Public Health, the foundational course, um, that one is, of course, it's required, but it's also, you know, most students enjoy it. The professors are wonderful. We also get a lot of students from other majors that take Health 2000 and decide, oh, I think, you know, this is what I, what I want to do. Um, students also enjoy our Introduction to Environmental Health class. I hear about the um, Women's Health class a lot that students really enjoy. Um, Health 3010, which is health problems. Mm -hmm. That one's also popular. Students enjoy that one. Um, Kelly, what about the 4000s? Well, 4000s are all, all great. Yeah. Epidemiology. Yeah. Um, I would go back to the 3000s and add in global health. Yes. Um, I know we were just chatting before the, the live session about, you know, you going over to London. Um, you know, we take students on study abroad trips and things like that. But even our equity courses, students mm -hmm. really like, and there's a choice of equity um, where individuals can take a, a, a traditional, kind of all-encompassing health equity course. They can go on the LGBTQ route, uh, or they can even go through Latina health. So there are options, even within the requirements mm -hmm. of the program, to really figure out what a student is most, um, most likely to enjoy. And just to clarify, um, so your 1,000 courses are kind of like your intro courses. 2,000 kind of uh, correlates with like your sophomore level um, and so forth. So 4,000 are those upper tier classes and that's when you're really kind of getting into the uh, major and pretty close to graduation, I would say, usually. <laughs> so, um, so Kelsey, another question for you. Let's say I'm like an undeclared high school uh, or undeclared major or high school student and I'm not totally sure what I've enjoyed um, or what I wanna do, but I have interest in some classes or I've done really well in some classes. Um, what kind of indicators uh, of those classes would say, hey, maybe I should consider public health as my degree? Um, well, I would say the first, you know, if you are interested in helping people, yeah. then one of our three concentrations is, can absolutely be for you. Um, for the pre-health, of course, you know, the students want to go on to a medical program, of course, the sciences, you know, they have to not only do well, but, you know, like them to enjoy them as well. Um, for community health, I would say, you know, if they did a CNA course when they were in high school or if they're, you know, even in college, um, that would be an indicator. Um, Again, some students from other majors will take our Health 2000 class, and if they yeah. enjoyed that one, well, that's a good indicator that yeah. you'll okay. enjoy this major. 
Um, and then our work site mixes, you know, business with public health. So if you're, if you like to help people, but you also want to get a little bit of that business side, then that would be a good indicator as well. Oh, yeah. I've never heard that one. Community can, health as business, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I can speak personally from the Health 2000 class. I came in as a chemistry major and decided, oh, I don't think this is for me. It's not, I'm not going to be able to you know, reach as many people as I want to because I originally wanted to go to pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just don't think that's for me anymore. So I switched to public health pre-health. And it, that was still my intent of possibly going to pharmacy school. And then I just, I took Health 2000 and I absolutely loved it. I loved, you know, they showed me everything that you can do with a public health degree. And as soon as I left that class, I called my family and was like, I'm switching to community health, public health. <laughs> nice. I just want to go ahead and let you know. I love it. I think I want to be... I want to be in public health, but more the health education kind of thing. I said, I've absolutely loved it. So the Health 2000 thing is a true story. A a true indicator. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like if you love Health 2000, you are in the right yes. track. So and, that's and we have a lot of friends that share that with roommates yeah. and, you know, their friends around campus. Yeah. And we get, we get a lot of questions of, hey, my roommate or my friend is. Yeah. Can you mm -hmm. tell me more about this? And, you know, again, it's what's going to make you happy. Um, because if, if you're happy and you're enjoying, one, you're going to do well in the courses, um, but two, you, you don't want to be working in a position that is not what you really enjoy. So I 100% agree with Kelsey about we see students that want to help people. That's it's just there's so many different yeah, options. Yeah, so many <laughs> routes, which I think is like bl a blessing and a curse because yes. you're like, which one do I want to take? But there's so many, and they're all so good, too. So it's just And it difficult. changes. You know, yeah. if you go back to the 80s, the big thing was HIV. Uh -huh. um, you know, right now, it, it's COVID. It's mental health. It's mm -hmm. substance abuse. So there's so many different avenues that students have options with. Um, let's see. Lindsay. So Lindsay is in her internship. She's, um, like Miss Russell said earlier, that last component of your degree is um, pretty much a 12-week internship full-time. Um, so Lindsay is in her internship, and Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about it and kind of tell us how you're taking what you learned in the classroom and applying it to your internships? Yeah, internship. So I'm currently doing an internship with Body Cancer Care. Um, so I'm working with, I'm not in the cancer center, but we are, I'm working with the outreach coordinator for the cancer center. So we basically are focusing on reaching individuals um, in the community, letting them know their screening options, when you need to start screening, um, things you need to look for just to um, do the early detection of cancer. So actually we are, um, we do a lot of community events where either we plan a community event to talk to people about their screening options or different types of lung cancer, um, you know, for each type of, each month, you know, there's a, a lung cancer awareness month, so a lot of times they try to focus on each month. Um, they also uh, will just, there'll be a community event already going on and say, hey, we'll just come set up a table, let you come walk up, and we'll tell you about some different cancer screening options. Um, we also um, are working on free mammogram clinics for uninsured women in Pitt County. Um, so we're kind of working, right now we're in the process of getting the word out about that and signing people up for our June and July clinic. Um, I would say that my classes have helped me tremendously in the past, like the start of my internship, because we get there and we're, we're trying to plan projects of what, what kids are going to talk about um, and where we're going to present. and. Your classes really do line up with, here's the needs assessment of what population needs this kind of screenings. Here's how to plan. You've got to think about all the resources that you need for the program. Um, where are you going to do it? Is that where the population is going to be? And you also have to think about the evaluation part. And that's how your classes line up. So I really have used everything in the majority of my public health classes just to help plan one program. So I would say that. I would not be able to be able to do what they're doing without learning this kind of stuff. Nice. So that's awesome, right here. Um, what are your future career goals or kind of routes you want to take? Um, I think I want to do something in health education, particularly. Mm -hmm. I'm not for sure, you know, what setting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm open to any kind of whether it be the hospital, the health department, uh, a doctor's office, even work site, more maybe employee wellness kind of thing. Um, I'm really not for sure. I'm kind of open to anything that gets thrown at me, so I'm willing yeah. to try. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she told us earlier that she got accepted to grad school, yes. so yay, Lindsay. Yes. That's awesome to hear. Um, 
so yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what you do in the future. Yeah, so for sure. A bit yeah, stay in touch. Obviously, we can't wait to hear. Um, and then last one for you: What is your favorite aspect of ECU and or the public health program here? I would say my favorite aspect of ECU probably just the the community that you feel like it's it's a big university but when you get in the classroom it's personal like your teachers know your face they know your name and especially the public health department um, I've had a wonderful experience with all every single professor that I've had like I said earlier they respond to your emails if you come up to them after class they're willing to talk to you they're not in a rush to get out of there um, I would say that just the genuine compassion that the professors have for your students and what they're teaching that's what I really like about the public health program. Nice. Um, is there anything else you guys want to share? Uh, Can I add my favorite part? Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think that our students bring so much that, you know, you can have a professor be ready to teach a class, but our students are so diverse and they bring so much to every class that every single class, even though it's the same content, it's a little bit different because of the students and what they share. We have international students. We have younger students and non-traditional students. We have students that are different socioeconomic backgrounds. And every single thing that they bring really makes every single class special. And I will say, I am constantly hearing about like stuff that um, public health students and the Department of Health Education and Promotion in general, just the accomplishments that students are constantly doing and how supportive professors are. Um, Ms. Russell and a, another professor, Ms. Haddock, run a group, um, if you're incoming, you'll probably hear about it, that kind of connects alumni and current students and prospective students to internship opportunities, job opportunities, and just connections in general. And I think that's super awesome to have because it shows that you have like a community that cares about you and wants you to succeed and wants to do that Pirates Helping Pirates motto pretty much. So. Um, let's see, did we have any questions from our friends watching? Yes. I do not see any. But if you guys are watching this later, feel free to send us a DM and we can absolutely get your questions answered. If I can't answer them, I'll send them to somebody that can't answer them. Um, so yeah, well, I want to thank you guys for joining us. I think it was really informational and awesome to hear some perspectives. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys.